Welcome to the Get Real Podcast. Your high-octane boost of in-the-trenches, tell-it-like-it-is reality therapy for personal, business, and real estate investing success. With your hosts, powerpreneurs, Angela Thomas and Ron Phillips, it's time to get real. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Get Real Podcast. I am your host, Ron Phillips. I am here, and I'm back with Angela Thomas. Wow. Hey, everybody. Last from the past, everybody. Angela huh. is back. So before we get started with Angela, make sure you like us. Give us a review. You can find us on getrealestatesuccess.com. You can also find us at rpcapital.com. Or excuse me, rpcinvest.com. If you're looking for RP Capital, you can find us there. I was um, like, dang, you got the RP Capital domain, huh? Okay. No. Yeah, no, still, still some other jokers got that one. Don't go to his site. No. Well, I mean, you can. It's completely different. You won't find real estate investing. So. <clears throat> you won't find that. You won't find that there. Welcome back, Angela. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thanks uh, for inviting me. Yeah. So as promised, um, I said we would invite Angela back to... Um, Give us a real look at what the new entrepreneur experience and journey is all about. And um, Angela has promised to get real with us today. So um, <laughs> the roller coaster uh, thing is true, Ron. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, any of you out there who are entrepreneurs, you will appreciate and you will empathize and sympathize and everything else um, with Angela's journey. And those of you who are not and, and are aspiring to become, you will have a clear look at what it, what it really takes uh, yeah. to do that. So let's just catch everybody up. Okay. So in December, a little bit before that, actually, you told me, hey, I want to go do my own thing and here's my thing. And since then, you have... You've done that. You've, you've gone yeah. out, you've done your own thing, and you've been working really, really hard, I know. And so just kind of catch us up. Like, what's happened over the last, what is it? Is that four months? Yeah, wow. I guess it is four months. Three Crazy. Months. Little, yeah, Three. close. <laughs> Three-ish. It feels like longer, actually. <laughs> so, well, since then, the, the coolest thing is, I mean, just to, you know, brag right up front is... You know, I've got my business where it's handling expenses and, you know, making a tiny bit of profit with just me in it, which is a good point because it gets you to where you can actually kind of, you know, you don't have to feel desperate anymore, which hurts your sales, as you know, and you don't have to take on people you don't want to work with. So, so that's a big thing for me. Getting there, though, you know, that happened just recently was such a roller coaster. I mean, I had some help with, you know, some friends of yours reached out to me, which was awesome. And they're great, great clients. But getting my own was and is interesting, figuring out the right path to do that. And, and I've, I've uh, kind of evolved over that time too. I've been, I mean, I've been reading everything I can get my hands on or audio booking it. Like, <laughs> on, and, on, uh, on and just, time speed. Sometimes yeah, I say three yeah. times speed for some of the books. I'm like, really? It Dude. depends how slow they talk. You know, if they're a fast yeah. talker, it's, it's fine. But I've been reading everything and my product and offer have kind of evolved over the last three months while talking to potential clients and current clients. Because, you know, it's, all, it's not about what I think is valuable. It's about what these people actually want. And they're all a little bit different. So... Man, I would say the biggest thing that's been most valuable for me is talking to as many of the people that I'm trying to target as possible. So, wow, big, that's great. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think there's a, there, there's a few things in there. Not not the least of which is don't be so rigid in what it is that you're doing. Be you when you're new, you got to be a little bit malleable in in not 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 crazy bendable, right? Because yeah. you still want to stay in your lane. But if you think your lane is this and everybody's telling you your lane is that, um, it's pretty important to be able to shift quickly and be able to, to compensate for that, right? Yeah. I think that's really, really important. Yeah. I've really learned that a lot of these business owners, I mean, they're doing great. They're making a ton of money. They're 
you know, but they're trying to grow their business and they don't have a lot of the pieces in place that I would, would have thought they did. <laughs> so, which, you know, kind of, it's cool that, you know, like that book, what was it? It's ready, fire, aim, you know? Yep. I mean, these people are firing like crazy and they are making money, but they don't have systems necessarily, or, you know, they don't have an offer right now. They don't have the landing pages, the content, any of that stuff that you kind of need to, to really get some traction. So that's kind of changed. I mean, I started out offering more just the tech side and I've realized that people need help with with these pieces in their business. Cause they're so busy, like firing and selling, not firing people, sorry, selling, shooting. Shooting. <laughs> hopefully not firing too many people. You know, it happens, but shooting and they don't have time to, they don't have the time to like, or they don't stop and put these pieces in place that help their business grow. Yeah. There and is I a know, point where you need to aim. Yeah. Right? I mean, you eventually have to aim. And, uh, and getting those, you know, those assets and those valuable pieces in your business are, you know, it's crazy important to get you to the next level. Otherwise you're just, it's all based off your running, right? Like the 10 X method that works for a while, but you can only run that. That's a great book, 10 X method, but you can only, you know, do so much action. It only gets you so far. You have to figure out how to replicate that. Right. And, yeah. uh, And a lot of that is having these assets in place, having videos and content and blogs and books and, you know, all that stuff. I can't do all that for them, but I've kind of, uh, you know, evolved a little bit into helping them figure out how to get those assets. So. Now that's really cool. That's really cool. I think the other thing is really important that you said is that you've been reading everything you could get your hands on about, about making this happen. Right. And yeah, so it's a, it's a, I mean, people say 12 hour days when you're starting a business, but I read these books in the morning on the treadmill and then at night before I go to bed. And then, you know, my work day is from wake up to going to sleep. And I feel kind of bad because I have a four year old, but, <laughs> but I mean, in this, I don't know right now when you're, because I'm in charge of sales, I have to build these assets for my business. I have to keep my customers super happy and get them, you know, referrals from them. And, I mean, there's so many things you're focused on when you're the core person. And I know I'm going to need to hire somebody to handle some of that, but it's really good when you're starting out to be in all those seats, right? So that you, you, you figure out how to adjust them and make them work to set you up for growth before you hire someone to do it for you, I think. Yeah. And I, I think, Angela, it's really, really cool that I think a lot of people uh, have the misconception that when you start a business that you have to lose money for a year or two years or yeah. break even or whatever. And uh, there's a lot of businesses that do that. It's, it's, it's not, it's a unique thing to have a business that in three months can be profitable. That's a yeah. very unique thing, right? In the business world, okay. most businesses don't make a profit or much of one for a year. And most businesses are out of business in a year or two years um, because they don't. And to put as much work and heart and soul and effort and all of this stuff into a business only to have it fail because you didn't figure out how to make profit. How to get money before. Yeah. Right? (laughs) Yeah. That's really, really too bad. And so here's a perfect example of, of leveraging everything. I mean, talk to people about leveraging literally everything that you know, who you know, everything that you've learned over the la- over your lifetime, you literally have leveraged every ounce of that to yes. make this thing work in three months. Yes, I have. I mean, obviously the network that, that has come from, you know, being in your world for the last decade was a huge part, but also, um, I mean, I basically started this as kind of a freelancer. I thought, you know, what am I good at and who needs it? And then I talk to those people and figure out how I can make that fit with exactly what they need. And, and it's not necessarily how I want to grow this long term, but you have to figure out, even if it's not your exact, you know, product that you want or how you see the business growing. I mean, it's important to figure out how to get dollars in the door so that you can 
build it. I mean, if you don't have any money coming in, there's no engine on this thing, right? <laughs> so, so yeah, I've leveraged. I mean, I've done things that, no, that makes it sound bad, that I'm not proud of. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Nothing unethical or bad, but oh. I, I mean, one of my first clients. <laughs> let's drill into that just a little bit more, Angela. That, yeah. Yeah. So one of my uh, first customers who I'm not going to name, not, not Ron has been, you know, a little bit of a nightmare to work with because I wasn't clear about exactly what my product was. I was more like, Hey, I'm going to help you with whatever Ready, fire you know. aim. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I was desperate for that business and the money coming in every month. Right. So, you know, basically anything he said he wanted, I was like, yeah, no problem. I got it, which is true. But I took on a lot of jobs that I was not happy about. And, and this guy, the way he runs his business, he lets, he has like 12 people on his staff and they are in charge. He's not in charge. The 12 people decide everything in that company and they, every little change or desire that they had became my problem. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, so, you know, I took him on because I needed the money and that's fine. You know, I think some of your first customers are, I mean, you are a little bit desperate. You don't want to sound desperate when you're talking to them, but you need to have money coming in. Yep. And if you have to do some things that you wouldn't normally do, like I know when Ron, when you started, when we started your company, we were given away like 50% of the profit on every deal to yep. get leads, right? Yep. And we didn't want to do sounds, that. Which sounds ludicrous ludicrous oh I mean, it wasn't actually, the profit it was the it was the total yeah yeah it was so, off the top i mean it was yeah. it was a, it was this was a top line expense right and yeah. but the the alternative was to i don't really even know we we, we didn't have really an alternative because no. we couldn't we, afford the mailer like i couldn't afford to front that money Right. And so I had to, I had to work a week. We had to work this really, really crazy deal with somebody who had the money to actually do the mailer to be able to have a room that we could speak to. Right. And so, yeah. And it wasn't very long after that. We didn't do that anymore. Exactly. So I've been taking on customers that, you know, I can, I can, I am helping them. I'm providing value, but it's not what I want to be doing. But I took them on because I needed the cash coming in to be able to build this out the way I want to, to create the assets I want to create, to make my product what I want it to be, to afford marketing, I mean, and, you know, pay my bills, all that stuff. You got to, you know, I think in the beginning, you do have to take on some interesting jobs and partnerships <laughs> to, uh, I mean, that makes it sound like I'm doing something shady and I'm not, but, you know, I... I'm learning from this who I do want to work with, what my real product is, the boundaries I need to put on it, and future customers. You know, I'll be able to weed those out as I get new customers right. that do fit what I'm looking for and, and who I want to serve. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think, I think if you're too picky in the beginning, uh, it's going to stunt your growth. Well, so. it's kind of like, like dating, right? So if everybody can take themselves back to high school or middle school or whenever you just, you know, whenever you started, whenever you started right? if you, if you're so picky that you never go on a date, you never actually realize what you like and what you don't like yeah. in, in a future partner. Right. And so right. it's the, the same action. thing. You, you have to be able to, you have to be able to experience some of this stuff as you're, as you're building your culture and your product and program and that whole who you want to work with and who you don't want to work with. There's no really, no, really no way to understand until you've done it or, or had someone else tell you, Hey, this is how this is going to work. If you, exactly. work, if you work with the, with, if you work with a fragmented company, you're going to get a fragmented thing, right? Yeah. That's all really, true. that's, <clears throat> that's so important. I think. Yeah. Um, so, so that's how I did it. I mean, that's how, you know, I went from, you know, leaving your company. And then, you know, four months later, I'm, I've replaced my income. I'm covering expenses and I'm working on growing it. So uh, it's not always pretty. <laughs> and, you know, some days after making a sale, like the mental side of it, I'm, I'm so like excited and I'm like, this rocks and I'm awesome at this. And, and this is going to be huge. And then, you know, the next day for no apparent reason, nothing's changed. You're like, man, I suck. 
<laughs> I don't know if I'm that good at this. Right. And like nothing's changed. Like your customers are still happy, but it's just like the the highs and lows just I don't know. They just hit you constantly. I feel like it's it's hard to remember to you have to stay positive and stay excited about this somehow to keep yourself going in the right direction. Um because it's Yeah, easy. and I mean there's a there's a I, I think it's and it's probably going to be difficult to put into words, but um, do your best. Um, I think that people, another misconception is that we, somehow entrepreneurs are just, and, and, we, and I guess entrepreneurs are a little bit different um, in a lot of respects, um, but that there's some kind of a, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but this, there's, this is mentally taxing. It is, it is. mentally and emotionally draining and somehow, after a full drain uh, during a day, somehow you, you, you have to figure out how to recharge. So talk, talk us through that because this, it's, it's one thing yeah. to be physically tired after working 12 to 16 hours that, that everybody can understand that because everybody has done that at one point, right? Right. There is a mental and emotional taxation of being an entrepreneur that most people just can't grasp. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm the best person to put it into words, but I have experienced it very recently and currently. So, so the, I mean, the, the roller coaster that you're on and knowing that, you know, your future, my family's future, like everything, people I want to hire, my customers, I mean, that's, all on me yeah. and, and that's why I end up getting down some days I'm like you know where's my next sale coming from <laughs> and and I love marketing so you know you know getting leads in is no problem but getting the getting the right people through the door day after day um, and growing this thing and being able to support other people with it and you know hopefully make a difference in the lives of customers and employees and I mean, you start thinking about all that when you think about growing it. And I know, Ron, you've been through this for a long time, but <clears throat> it's a lot of pressure and, and it makes little things like, I know we've laughed about the coronavirus. I'm sorry to bring that up, but stuff like that or, or the, you know, president changing or stuff. I'm like, and my business is still really small. And I'm like, how is this going to affect <laughs> what I'm doing right now? And you have to start thinking like that, like look at the future and, and, and I, I let it overwhelm me sometimes and it's easy to let the stress, you know, hurt your, I mean, I get, you know, the tight muscles, your back hurting. I mean, the physical stress isn't always just being tired, being all wired up and, and think, you know, overthinking everything also takes a toll on your, on your health. So it's, it's so, hugely important to keep positive. So let's shift gears because now we've we've talked about all how horrible it is and and we've yes. probably talked most of the people listening out of becoming I'm honest. sorry I'm sorry that wasn't my that wasn't No my no no <laughs> that that's this is the get real show this is not yeah. sunshine and and lollipops every day it it just isn't Ru yeah. starting and running a business and actually generating a profit is hard it is no joke but I think so. There's a couple of things, right? If, if, if you're you're always forward looking, you're always future looking. And Angela is a visionary, kind of like me, and and so I know that's where she's headed. She's already got this thing. Well, she's already shot. Ten she's years down the road. <laughs> now she's aiming. She's like trying to track down the bullet. Oh yeah. crap! That went the wrong way. Where did one. that go? <laughs> but let's talk about the benefits of this, right? Because. <clears throat> Why would anyone want to do this? If it's, if it's literal hell on earth for, I mean, it's only been three months. Anybody can live through hell for three months. But yeah. if, it's, if it's been hell on wheels for three months, and you know, for us, it was, goodness, like at least a year. Why but, would anyone do this? Because it's, it's not. It's not hell on wheels. Like In between those overthinking, down on yourself days, it's freaking exciting. You know, you're like, I mean, my whole life I've wanted to build something that was mine, you know, and I'm, I'm probably not going to go out and build a house or a, you know, a building or whatever. So I, I, I want my own, my own living, you know, my own thing, my own company, my own empire. Sorry to use that word. I don't know if it'll ever get that big, but still, <laughs> it's so exciting to see your efforts directly benefit 
you and your family and, and to be able to, you know, I'm hoping in the future to be able to help all these people with it. Um, even my customers watching them grow their businesses and, um, you know, benefit from the things I'm doing for them. It's exciting. It's, I mean, it was, it was super cool, you know, at your company watching people benefit from real estate investing and, you know, watching them grow. Um, but when you own it and it's your thing and you created it, um, I mean, I get to determine, you know, the, the, um, the feeling in my company and the, the culture and, and make sure, you know, and make a difference in the life of my customers. And it's just cool to own it. I mean, anyone who's done it, it's, I, I don't know if you'd say it differently, Ron, but I just, I'm not that eloquent with words, but it's really, really cool to be working on something that is yours. You know, yeah. there's a, it's, it's, it's um, it's a creation. Yeah, it's wanting to build. Right. And, yeah. um, you know, I got bored, like I, 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 for a couple of years, I basically didn't do a whole lot. And, yeah. And man, people who are like geared to build things and create things have to be building and creating something. You know, that's just yeah, it's this drive kind of and it doesn't right? go away, right? Mm -hmm. No. And and then it's 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 kind of like, you know, you've birthed this thing and you also not only do you get to create it, but do you get to watch it grow up, come something yeah. else, right? Um, yep. It's it's really, really it's a it's a special process. But just like being a parent, which a lot of people will relate to out there, being a mother, which you will relate to, man, it's still hard. It's I hard. Mean, it's still really oh. hard work, right? Raising a family or, or, or a kid, right? You, you, you created, there's this creation, right? This really cool baby. Then the work starts. I mean, and then you realize oh it's God. all on you. You know, yep. you bring that baby home from the hospital, and you're like, "Oh crap, I'm Just the only." Guys, it's my fault. It's um, yeah, and and you have to uh, you have to figure out what to do in every situation. And I mean, it's the same thing with your company. And it's cool. I posted a quote yesterday, and I it would probably take me a minute to look it up, but some hedge fund billionaire was talking about how he looks at every challenge in his life as a um, as a puzzle. And when he uh, solves the puzzle, he gets a gem that he gets to add to his, you know, I don't know, <laughs> to, his, to his puzzle solving uh, <laughs> cheap gem thing. Yeah. And, and then, so when you collect all these gems, you get to solve bigger and more exciting puzzles as you go. And that's kind of what happens. I mean, with raising a kid, like you said, and also with creating a business, you know, each time you solve a problem, it feels good. It's exciting. And you get to build on that and continue to grow it. And I love that. I've always loved solving problems. So it's a good fit, you know? And I think the, the most important thing you're going to talk about building is, is, is you can build this thing, but once you've got the thing big enough that it's affecting people, lots mm -hmm. of people, you're not only building the thing, you're building the people up with it. Yeah. And, the, and I love that about yeah. it's so cool, right? That you can, that you can take even these businesses, what you started out helping, if you can help them grow, then they hire more people and they do business with more people. And the ripple effect of this is massive from a really small business. You know, you can be helping yeah. 10, 10 customer, 10 clients of yours. And those 10 businesses can be helping literally thousands of other people. In addition to that, those 10 will help you hire the one and the other, the next person and the next person, which all will gain knowledge from you, your business expertise. And then you will also be gaining gems, I guess, is what we're talking yeah, about. Gems, gems on, game, uh, as, right? as this thing grows. Because the one thing that people can't take away from you is what you know and who you know. right? Yeah. And so your network grows and because you are you know, avidly out there seeking the knowledge, your knowledge grows and man, it's just, it's really, really cool how you can, you can leverage all of this stuff and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Cool. Yeah. yeah it's remarkable. And it's amazing how fast, that's why I've been reading so much. I don't know if I'm changing the subject here too much, but I've been reading all these books because you quickly kind of outgrow your own knowledge and you, 
Mm-hmm. You need you need new gems from books to help you solve new problems. And I mean, I'm going to run out of books here pretty quick, but it's given me, it's given me a lot of a uh, a lot of guidance in uh, you know making sure I set things up the right way, and you know it just kind of helps you see the next steps. Uh, I think the other thing <laughs> that books do, at least for me, Angela, is that they you know my my brain is really creative anyway. But when I'm listening to ideas, my brain goes on a tangent. Yeah. Oh, I will come up with. Yeah. Yeah. Just you're, you're, it's like your brain is, is, is going to the gym when you read a, when you read a book. Yeah. And that's why I do it on the treadmill. It's like double purpose. You know, it's like, I don't even think so. I think it's actually like, it's like squared or, you know. Yeah. 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 To the, to the ninth power or whatever. It's got to be to a, a, a significant power. Right, Let's not get into math too much here, but yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> well, it's just super. It's just super exciting. So, any um, yeah. let's give some let's give some helpful like words of encouragement to anybody who's starting this. Like, if if someone's out there and they're thinking, "Man, I really want to do this, but I'm scared to do it," what would you tell people? I would say, like, take a hard look at yourself and see what, you know, skills or what you have that can make money right now. Because, I mean, not everybody does that, but that was so important for me is knowing that I wasn't going to starve for a year while I built this thing. And I know there's people out there creating products and software and you can get funding. That's awesome. But that's just my personal advice from my journey is, is find something you can make money with right away and then let it evolve from there. Um, and then, you know, another piece of advice is I'd say not pass off sales uh, until you have a good handle on what you're doing and your product and you have assets and all that because talking to your potential and your target clients about your products is, is huge for understanding what value you provide and if you need to shift what you're doing. And so I would say definitely handle all calls and talking to as many potential clients as you can. And then the third thing is just taking little steps. There's so many different things you need to be working on when you're building a business, you know, from sales to creating your content and your assets and all that, setting up everything. Just take little steps in each one each day. You know, I try to talk to a couple leads or potential clients a day, also creating, working on creating assets. I mean, just little steps towards it over time gets you there you know so just don't let it overwhelm you it's easy to look at all of it and freak out and quit so it's just little steps it's it's like the compound theory you know just just keep working on each thing every day and take some kind of step towards it yeah that's that's really really good um i think a lot of people have that overwhelm effect when they think of all the stuff that they've got to do i mean shoot even people who are looking at investment properties do that to themselves, right? Oh yeah. Big, huge thing out of it. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but look at the next thing you can do. What's the yeah, next? Let's just break this down into, you know, bite-sized pieces and, and figure out how long this takes to actually make this happen and make us, make us comfortable with it. Right. Right. Um, and it's the same thing. The other piece of that is breaking this thing down is organizing your day in such a way that you don't leave one of those pieces behind. I mean, imagine how it would be, for Angela, if she went a week without talking to clients, yep, you can't you you can't do that. When you're new, you have to be every day talking to new potential clients. Every day, you have to be doing that. And you hit on a huge point there. Sorry, when you're no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, I think that one of the biggest problems that new entrepreneurs have is they focus on one or the other, and that's like the two things to me, the biggest things are uh you know sales having sales conversations and working on your business perfecting your product creating assets tangible you know ebooks videos your website all that kind of stuff you can't let either of those drop right i have to work on both every day yeah a lot cuz it's easy to get wrapped up in making your product absolutely perfect or just doing sales activity Uh, And I mean, sales activity is most important, obviously, but they're both really important. That's the whole ready, fire, aim thing, right? When you have a concept, because Angela had a concept. I did. She hadn't sold the concept yet. It wasn't perfect yet. No. But 
shooting the bullet is is sales. That's what that means. It's ready. It's I have a concept. Now I'm going to shoot. After I shoot, I will aim, right? Oh, and then I'll figure out. I'll figure it out afterwards. But if I can't make a sale, so many people go into business and they spend all of this time and all of this money trying to create this perfect thing that they don't even know if anybody even wants. Yep. Just because you, you know, want it doesn't mean someone else does. Yeah, just because you think it's cool doesn't mean everybody else thinks it's cool. Nope. And just because Angela thought that there was a hole in small businesses doesn't mean there actually was one. Right. Right. You have to be able to go out there and, and, and it, it does two things. Number one, it proves concept, but number two, it puts money in, in, in the pocket, pocket of the business that you have to have money coming in. Right. Yeah. And that's the people, people get out there and they burn through money without a proven concept and wonder why things aren't working out. And Angela, you did this in the right order. Really, yep. really good job. And I'm, I'm amazed. I mean, guys, just think about that. You go from concept to profitable in three months. I mean, that's, that's really cool. Well done. Angela. Thank you, Ron. That's I mean, amazing. my uh, network through you definitely helped. I got to say, so. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what Use your network. Earlier, people I mean, you every, know. Yep. Everybody has this and people take it for granted or, or they don't look at it and, and they do one of two things, right? We talked about this in the, in the previous. So if people have missed that, don't shoot yourself in the foot on the way out the door where you're leaving because you never know when those people can help you in your new venture, right? right. So don't do that, number and, one. You know, and be a decent person. <laughs> yeah. And number two, yeah. when you leave, I mean, think about all of the resources that you have and don't be scared to go out and actually utilize them. That's one of the things that Angela did well, yeah, I mean, there was a network, but those that network is was available to her, right? And she knew that. And so, yeah. but you can't be scared to use that network. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting you should leave a company and start calling the company's clients without permission. That I was going to say that. I was going to say I didn't. I didn't do anything sketchy with it and I didn't get all MLM on people, not to hurt anyone's MLM feelings, but I didn't reach out to people and try to get them to meet up so I could pitch them. I, I actually tried to uh, just put it out there and let people know what I was doing in a non-salesy way and let them reach out to me, uh, which worked really well for me and didn't make anyone, you know, skeezy alarm bells go off. So, right, <laughs> right. Yeah, I, and I didn't just, chase down any of Ron's clients. So yeah. it's it's really important. So I'm I'm saying don't overlook the network that you have out there, but yeah. don't don't utilize it in a douchebag way. If if you're leaving a company, don't go try to raid the company. Right? That's a that's a douchebag thing to do, and in my opinion, it will hurt you long term because this network that Angela has had access to still, she still has access to it because she didn't do it in a douchebag way and it didn't hurt me at all. Right. It only helps me yeah. because if these other, if these other customers are helped by her, ultimately it helps me. It certainly makes me look better because I'm, I'm the person who introduced them. Yeah. And, and number two, if they do better and I'm doing business with them anyway, it helps me. Right. Yep. So everybody can't be short sighted about things. But you can't be short-sighted about what you have access to, right? I think people overlook. It's your network is worth way more than literally anything else because people are really what make things happen. So, man, just be a good human and, and take your idea out there and go try to help people as, as Angela's done. Man, well, well done. I'm, Thank I'm you. super pumped for you. By Thank the way... If any of you out there are listening, have a small business and you need some help in the areas that she was talking about. She does a fantastic job. I was her first client. I'm still her client. Many of my friends are her clients. I know she's got some people that I don't know too who are clients of hers. Yeah, I got a couple of my own. Don't worry. <clears throat> so so <laughs> feel free to to reach out to Angela and find out what she does and see if there's a fit there. It's, Thanks, a, it's a really inexpensive way to get a piece of your business that would cost you a small fortune if you tried to do it internally. And so, so reach out to her. What, where can they find you again? VATex.com or you can email me at Angela T at VATex.com. And that's Angela T. Angela T. Yeah. At, uh, and it's V A T E C H S.com. Just like Virginia tech. 
with an yeah. S. V A Tex. Virginia Tech fan from California. I'm, you know. I'm not at all a Virginia Tech fan, <laughs> but it's. I don't even know who they are. What? No. I, I don't know either. When yeah. since when does a since when does a technical college have these sports teams? I don't know. What I know. I know. I know. That's cool. But all right, everybody. Appreciate it. Angela, appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. We will see you all next week. If you like the episode, man, and this one in particular, because it was Angela. So if you put a thumbs down on it, you hurt her feelings, not mine. But don't hurt my feelings. So don't do that, right? And then write us a great review. That helps more than you know. Give us a five-star review. Send us out. Share us with all of your friends. You can find us at getrealestatesuccess.com. You can find my other company at R, uh, rpcinvest.com. Got it. And um, until next week, guys, we'll see you. Thanks, Ron. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.